In today's video, we're going to test out a mouse trap that's illegal to use in Ireland and works by placing a powerful rubber band around the mouse's neck. Then we're going to take the mouse we caught in this trap and feed it to wild animals in the backyard. And finally, for question and answer time, I'm going to explain why I have a whole box of uranium ore. So stay tuned because it's Monday, and on my channel, that means a brand new mousetrap video. Today for Mousetrap Monday, we're going to test out one of the most controversial style mousetraps that I've ever seen. There's a lot of people that want to see this mousetrap banned. In the past few weeks, I've been checking off the list of home improvement projects. Some painting, trim work, recalking, and replacing the front door. So I was at the Home Depot to get supplies. Whenever I'm there, I check out the pest control aisle to see if there's anything new. And I noticed they started selling this. The Amdro mouse trap kills quickly. The mouse enters the trap. Trap releases powerful ring, also known as a big thick rubber band around the mouse's neck. And the mouse dies fast. The safer, cleaner solution. Now I haven't seen this brand of mouse trap before, the Amdro, but I have seen this style. A couple years ago, I posted a video on this, the new ski mouse trap out of New Zealand. This one says it's made in the USA, but they basically look like the exact same trap. So let's take out the Amdro and see how they compare. Other than the brand names on these traps and the color of rubber bands, these are exactly the same. They even have the same patent number printed on them. These were first patented in 2011 by several inventors in New Zealand. And a second patent was filed in 2017 featuring this updated design. Now it's hard to see the back of this trap with the white background, but it's plastic. This one comes out. There's a place for the bait right here, a trigger, and a little latch. And it slides right in the back of the trap. To set it, you pull out the trap from the safety shield. The safety shield has a bait cup in back and a tunnel for the mouse to enter. And the trap itself has a lever and a trigger right here. We'll go ahead and set it. This rubber band is very tight, but it rolls down. You want to make sure the latch is up so it goes over. And then there's a groove right here. We'll seat that in. If you don't hold it, it will shoot off. We'll get it again. Try to keep it from shooting off. Now the back of this really wants to go up, but we have a hook right here to latch it in. So now the mouse will go in the safety tube because it wants the bait in the tray. The rubber band's all set and ready to go. When it sticks its head in there, lifts up the trigger, that rubber band goes around its neck or body, and quickly the blood gets cut off. You can see around my finger it's white, and it's turning purple on the end. That is some serious force. I'm going to take that off. Oh, much better. There's a big groove right there. I'm going to put some peanut butter in the bait tray. That will draw them in. Load up our trap. Now we're going to set this up in the barn with motion cameras and see if mice will go in there, trip the trigger, and get caught with the rubber band. But I'm going to be very selective in what I show. There's a lot of people who think this is not a humane way to trap mice. There's petitions online to have this trap banned on Amazon. And currently this trap is illegal to use in Ireland and maybe other countries. I found websites devoted to reporting people who are selling or using this trap in Ireland. So I'm going to be very selective in what I show in this video. But if you want to see the full sequence of this trap in action, I'll put it on my website. So let's go set up the motion cameras in the barn and see if we can get some mice with these big thick rubber bands.
Well, there's no doubt the Amdro mousetrap does exactly what it says. The mouse went in there, tripped the trigger, and got a rubber ring on its neck. On the box it says, mouse dies fast, guaranteed, or your money back. And after reviewing the trail camera footage, I do consider this a humane trap. It works very quickly. Think about your toughest UFC fighters. Once they get in a neck hold, the fight's over, they're pretty much out. That's a very thick and powerful rubber band for a mouse. I think the reason this trap gets so much bad press is how it looks visually. People don't like seeing a mouse with a band around its neck. Now my biggest problem with this trap are the rubber bands. The package came with a dozen rings, and for the price of the trap, that's a lot of mice. But eventually, you're going to run out and need to buy more. If you buy the official Nooski replacement bands, you can get 20 for just over $8, but I still think that's way too expensive. Growing up on a farm, I've used a lot of these bands before. If you search on Amazon for castration rings, you can get 300 of these same rubber bands for just under $9. That's a huge savings. Now I don't want the mouse we caught in this trap to go to waste, so I'm going to feed it to wild animals in my backyard. If you've seen my videos, you know all kinds of animals love to eat mice. Cats, raccoons, skunks, opossums, hawks, owls, and other wildlife. But if they have a rubber band, that could hurt the wild animal. So we're going to cut it off. We'll reenact it on our stuffed mouse. Let's take the mouse we caught. There, now it's safe. Let's go set up the motion cameras and see what comes along and has a mouse snack. Well, it's a good thing we took the rubber band off the mouse's neck. Otherwise, it would have ended up in a pile of skunk poop. Those wild animals love to eat the rodents we catch. Okay, question and answer time. This one caught my attention. When are you going to test a small nuclear bomb for killing mice? I've been waiting for that video for so long. Now, I know he's joking, but I have to be very careful with what I say on YouTube. One of my family's favorite YouTube channels to watch is Cody's Lab. He's a genius, so entertaining. And in one of his videos, he made a joke about how he hasn't made a nuclear bomb yet. Well, the authorities saw that video and they actually visited his house with Geiger counters to check out, make sure he wasn't making a nuclear bomb. So they don't joke around with that kind of thing. I'm not smart enough to know how to make a nuclear bomb and I don't have the material. Well, kind of. I do have some uranium. That's for show and tell. It's in this lead film box. Now I inherited the uranium from a relative. Back in the 1950s, people wanted to get rich quick by going out in the desert with Geiger counters and finding uranium ore. So the hobby shop sold a rock collection. Take it out here. A little pamphlet on uranium, 1955. And here is a box full of rocks. Uranium ore. I'll do a close up so you can see it. This radioactive collection consists of nine minerals. They all end in night. The second column says U203%, THO2. I don't know what that means, but it says 60%, 8%, 45, 1, 3, 10 to 25%, and the highest is 75%. The third column is composition, calcium uranium phosphate, copper uranium phosphate, and down the line. And finally, where it's from, New Hampshire, Arizona, Norway, Nevada, Colorado, California, and the last are New Mexico. My favorite in the collection is this, number eight, fused sand from atomic blast. So this is sand that got so hot from an atomic blast that it fused together. And here's the most radioactive mineral I have, gummite, hydrous uranium oxide from New Hampshire. Pretty neat thing to have, and I think it's safe, but I still want to be sure, so I keep it in the lead pouch. If you have any information on these vintage uranium ore sets, how much are they worth? Are they common? Are they safe? Leave a comment down below. Okay, next question. In my last video, I shared that I went deer hunting and was making venison hamburger. And he says, I trust you examined it for chronic wasting disease. 
While I'm very fortunate to live in Oregon, there's no documented cases of chronic wasting disease, but I did have it checked. They took a lymph node in the deer's neck at a check station. Recently, they've enacted some laws to keep it out. You can't bring a deer from out of state, any part of the brain or nervous system, only the meat, the skull has to be detached from the brain. Also, you can no longer buy deer or elk pee for hunting, but I definitely don't want chronic wasting disease here. Hopefully it stays out for a long time. Thank you so much for all the questions. And thank you for watching my channel. If you haven't subscribed to Mousetrap Monday yet, please consider clicking the button right here. Currently I'm posting new videos every Monday. So if you wanna see how to catch mice, rats, squirrels, chipmunks, moles, voles, and gophers, stay tuned.